Hi, I'm Jacob from Warm. When we look at how much energy our homes use, it always comes down to three factors, which we call the energy equation. Those three factors are the house shell, the house systems, and the occupant behavior. When we talk about occupant behavior, all we're really talking about is our habits. And the great thing about looking at our habits to lower our energy bills is that it's free. It doesn't cost us anything to change our habits. The problem is that our habits are our habits, and they're often the hardest thing to change. But if they're not serving us well, it's worth switching them out. And there's a lot of money and energy to be saved here. Electricity is measured in KWH, which stands for kilowatt hours. Kilowatts just means power. It's a measurement of power. Hours is obviously time. So when you use electricity, you're being charged for how much power you've used over what period of time. Here's the trick. We don't get much control over how much power things use. That's set at the factory, which means the main thing we can control is time. This leads to the very simple rule, if you're not using it, turn it off. But wait, some people aren't turning things off due to misinformation. A lot of people have heard that turning things on and off all the time is actually going to run the bill up more. This is simply not true. The reason people say that is because anytime you turn on an electrical appliance, there's a big spike of power. But that spike of power lasts for less than a second. Lots of power, very little time. The overall effect isn't that much on your bill. But when you leave something on, it's pulling power second after second, minute after minute, hour after hour. And that's going to run up your bill. So the general guide we use is that if you're going to be out of the room for more than 10 minutes, it's worth shutting stuff off. And that'll save on your bill. You may know a few people who sleep with the TV on. That's costing you money. But the easiest way to solve that is just turn the TV off before you go to sleep. And if that doesn't work for you, you might want to try using a timer. That way the TV automatically turns off after you've gone to sleep. If you find that you're having trouble sleeping without the TV running, just try it a few nights. Your need to sleep will override your need to have the TV on. Hey, wake up. You're losing money. In fact, you can lose as much as $90 a year easily just by having two TVs running at night when no one's watching them. Hey, hey, wake up. Come on, that's right. Get out of bed. Turn off the TV. Well, wait, I, I, I'm on the TV, so you don't have to turn. No, no, wait, you really, it, it's, it's. Uh... For some electrical items, it wouldn't make sense to turn them off. But you might want to consider turning them down. Think about turning down the thermostat on your refrigerator if you find that it's so cold that your milk, eggs, or vegetables are getting icy. You also might want to think about turning down the temperature on your hot water tank. You can also save a lot by turning down your air conditioner during the summer. You want to use your air conditioner to take the edge off of the heat, but avoid making it cold inside during the summer. If you've got central air, I'd recommend setting it to about 78 and that way, you can save a lot more money over the summer. A few habit changes can save a lot of money. The first is dressing appropriately for the season. For example, inside your home during the winter, layer up and you can be very comfortable without having such high bills. It is especially important to wear something warm on your feet during the winter. Hot air rises and cold air falls to the ground. Your home may have a fine temperature throughout most of the room, but the floor will often be colder. If you're walking around barefoot, then you're likely to say, Woo wee! It's cold in here! Up goes the thermostat, and up goes the bill. In general, you want to keep your thermostat between 68 and 72 degrees during the winter. Every degree you can lower that thermostat setting, 
can save you another 2 to 3% off of your heating bill. So a simple thermostat change from 73 to 70 degrees could easily save $100 to $300 in most homes. And remember, the thermostat's designed to be kept at a steady setting. The only time you want to be changing that setting is when you can turn it down for a long time, like five hours or longer. With this in mind, you can save a lot of money in your home simply by developing the habit of dialing down that thermostat. When you're sleeping, you need your bed to be warm. You don't need to be heating up the air throughout every room in the house. So throw some extra blankets on the bed, maybe even an electric blanket, and turn down that thermostat three, five, or ten degrees. For every degree that you turn down the thermostat at night, you can save another 1% off the bill. So turn it down 5 and save 5%. That's pretty easy money for just dialing down the thermostat. Also, if you're going to be gone during the day, turn down the thermostat then. There's no point in heating up the house when no one's going to be there. If you don't think that dialing down would work well for you, you might want to consider a programmable thermostat. This is a thermostat that can be programmed to automatically turn the temperature down or up for you when you want it to. That way, it guarantees that it's turned down every time you need it, which makes sure you'll save the money. Also, you can program it to turn the heat back up before you wake up or before you get home. So all you know is the comfort of your own home. Wouldn't it be nice to have a source of free light? Guess what? You've got it. The sun is our only source of free light, yet most people don't make use of it. Keep blinds and curtains open during the day to let in natural daylight. Not only is it better for your health, it often means you won't need to turn the lights on. That sunlight can also be a free source of heat. Open the blinds or curtains on south-facing windows to let in that sun. Since the sun is lower in the sky during the winter, that sunlight will come deep into the house and provide free heat. How much heat it provides really depends on your home, windows, and shading, but it may be a real boost. By the same token, be sure to close those blinds and curtains during the summer to keep the heat out and keep your home cooler. I often talk to people who are paying the bills by themselves, but they're getting a whole lot of help running that bill up. When you consider behavioral changes for saving energy, it's important that everyone in the house is on board with the program. At Warm Training Center, we really recommend gathering everyone who lives in the house together for a house meeting. Pull out the bills and show everyone what you're spending on utilities. Help them understand what else that money could be used for and they're likely to want to help. The main purpose of the meeting is to get everyone to agree that they'd like to help save energy. Once they're motivated to do that, showing them how becomes a lot easier. Parents, you might want to try setting up an incentive program for your kids. Tell them something like, if we can save $30 off the electric bill next month, you get half. That way, they're motivated to try to help bring that bill down. They earn some extra money, you save energy. The important thing is to make sure that everyone is working together to try to save on that bill. So remember, turn it off if you're not using it, turn it down if you can, Use that free light and heat from the sun and have a house meeting to make sure everyone's involved in saving energy.